About a month ago, I made a YouTube short showing the results of me printing this Notre Dame Cathedral on my Creality Ender 3 3D printer. And overall, the feedback I got from everyone was really positive. And I figured there may be some interest for this video, me going through all of the settings I used in order to make this print. So I'll preface here, Every printer works differently. I'll say this multiple times throughout the video, but just because all of these settings worked well for me doesn't mean they'll work well for someone else. Regardless, we'll build a foundation here and hopefully give you some settings to try and tune if it doesn't work out well for you the first time around. But yeah, in today's video, we'll go through Cura, just through all of the different sections of the settings I used and try and give you uh, the encouragement to try to print this model. Okay, so we are now in Cura and I just imported in the model. I put the link in the description, so if you haven't already, go click that link, download the model here, and we'll go ahead and go through all of the settings that I used to make this work. First things first, the model imports in like this we need to rotate so that it's laying flat so yep I'll rotate it 90 degrees here next thing I want to do is scale the model up the reason for that is because if we zoom in here we have some very very small intricate parts to the model that really won't turn out unless we scale it up. To be honest, these pieces right here might not turn out, but if we go to the front as well, just some of these pillars and everything, we need to scale it up just a little bit to ensure that the nozzle is big enough or can make that fine detail. So I'm going to click on the model again and then uh, we'll do uniform scaling and let's try 105 uh, if we can go much higher maybe 115 135 out oh, yeah that's the the very edge um, 130 won't work 128 works will 129 work it will all right so we'll scale it up 129 uh, percent. It's been a little while since I did this, so I didn't have the number off the top of my head. For some of you, this may not work. You may be getting um, this. It's not an error, but just it's saying that you can't um, scale it up that much, and it, it has um, the the gray and yellow uh, stripes. So. The reason for that is because of the brim or the raft or whatever. So quickly, if you go to the settings and usually I just type in brim and then press enter. So it's the build plate adhesion here. It's actually a skirt, I think by default brim is something else, but set that to none. We don't need any of that. And from there, we'll be able to use the entire build plate rather than having that a skirt put around the model that's just really wasting plastic so we don't need that from there you should be able to scale the model to 129 percent the original amount and then we we give a little bit more volume here in again some of these pillars to give us our best chance to have them turn out also some of the these here we're not using any supports for this. There will be no supports that we need to use as long as the settings are dialed in, the printer's dialed in. Um, so yeah, having a little bit more volume in uh, these overhangs here will help us out. I should preface by saying every printer works differently. So you may be able to use these settings I'm showing you as a starting point, but just because of how two different printers operate, you may need to change some things. Now, 
The next thing we need to do is change the nozzle size. So a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, if you want to try it out, by all means go ahead. But uh, again, some of these pieces here, it, the, the 0.4 millimeter nozzle is just too big to actually get these things to turn out. So instead, I used a 0.3 millimeter nozzle. That should make this print, as, as long as you use all the settings here, it should make the print around two and a half to three days. Um, by all means, you can go ahead and try a 0.2 millimeter nozzle, but that means it will be a, a full week, roughly. I tried generating the, the G code, and yeah, it's about a full week worth of printing. So I'd rather trade off some of the detail by actually getting a model a little bit faster. Um, what we'll do is go to the settings and then extruder nozzle size, click on 0.3 and we're going to keep the changes here. It says the, the build plate adhesion. Um, no, we'll just keep that. And after you generate this G-code, if you go back to a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, make sure to change this or else um, some things will not turn out too well for your future prints. So yeah, now I think we're ready to go through all the settings and I'm just going to open this up here and we'll go from top to bottom. I'll try and give as much as I can and um, hopefully everything ends up working out for you and you can make a, a cool Notre Dame. So we'll start with quality, um, 0.2 layer height, initial layer 0.2, Line width 0.3, wall 0.3, outer 0.3, inner 0.3, top and bottom line width 0.3, inf or uh, yeah, infill line width 0.3, and um, initial layer 100%. It's everything in the quality. We'll go to shell next. Uh, wall thickness 0.6. This won't need to change. Wall line count four, um, then zero zero top. Surface skin layers, top bottom thickness 0.8, top thickness 0.8, top layers 4, bottom thickness 0.8, um, bottom layers 4, top bottom pattern are lines, bottom pattern initial layer lines, and then um, we'll optimize wall printing order. Uh, so this will uh, print from the inside out, I believe, is what it does. So make sure to have that checked. And then compensate wall overlaps. I had that checked. Uh, inner wall overlaps checked. Checked. Fill gaps between walls. We'll do that everywhere. Uh, this is just where um, things may not fit. Uh, horizontal expansion, zero, um, zero for the next one. Z seam alignment uh, is a user specified, and then Z seam X is 117.5, Z seam Y 235. Uh, seam corner preference, smart hiding, uh, that's the, the setting for that one. Um, extra skin wall count, this is set to one. Skin overlap percentage 10%, skin overlap 0.03. For the really critical stuff, I'll try and explain what the setting is, but for this other stuff, like what I just did for the shell, aside from like the uh, wall line count and, and um, top and bottom layers, um, I'll just go through what the setting is and not go into too much detail, just in the, the um, sense of time. Infill density, uh, 15%. You could make this 100% infill. 15% is just fine. It will save us some plastic, uh, save us some PLA because we really just want the outside of this model to look good. Internally, I really couldn't care what it looks like. Um, infill line distance, six millimeters. Infill pattern, cubic. You could really use any infill pattern. Cubic worked for me, so if you want to do the exact setting I used, use that. Uh, X offset for infill zero, uh, infill Y offset zero. Infill line multiplier one, uh, the overlap percentage 30%. Infill overlap 0.09, uh, infill wipe distance zero, infill layer thickness 0.2, and zero um, 
zero for minimum infill area, skin removal width, 1.2, and then it's 1.2 all the way down to the uh, bottom skin expand distance, maximal skin, or maximum skin angle for expansion, 90 degrees, and then zero for minimum skin width for expansion. That's infill uh, material, 200 degrees Celsius printing temperature. This is for PLA, and I used eSun PLA plus cool white um, for the color. And then the build plate temperature, 50 degrees Celsius. The flow is 100%, and then that's 100% all the way down from flow all the way to the initial layer of flow. Got through material pretty quick. Speed, this is going to be one of the more critical pieces. 50 millimeters per second, that worked for me, so that's what I used. Um, infill speed will be the same, uh, 50 millimeters per second. Wall speed, half that, 25 millimeters per second, and that's for the outer and inner wall, as well, as well as the top and bottom speed. Travel speed, so this is the speed moving uh, maybe, for example, from one of these pillars to the next p pillar, uh, speed it up a little bit there with 150 millimeters per second. Initial layer speed, slow things down at 20 millimeters per second, get a nice strong initial layer. Um, and then, yeah, the print speed 20, and then initial layer travel speed 100 millimeters per second. Number of slower layers, uh, that will be set to two, and then everything else below here is unchecked. Uh, travel, we need to enable it. retraction, this is big. Um, so, having retraction enabled because we have a lot of areas where the nozzle is going to be traveling to some uh, pieces that are just hanging out in space. If retraction is not enabled, we are going to have a mess of those little lines in between the layers um, that we need to clean up. And if you're fine with that, then by all means, go ahead. But uh, if you have retraction enabled, you kind of save yourself a little bit uh, with the post print cleanup. Retraction distance, seven millimeters. Retraction speed, 45 millimeters per second. Um, and then let's see, retraction minimum travel 1.5 millimeters, maximum retraction count 100, uh, minimum extrusion distance window 10. Uh, and then that's off, retract before outer wall is checked. And then we have Z hop when retracted, absolutely have this checked. The reason again is because we have some very, very, very thin pillars that we're going to be making. And maybe maybe these ones are a little bit better to show. Uh, they're a little thick. But we're going to be building these pillars. And once we're building them initially and we're printing them, they're going to be very flimsy, especially actually once we get towards the top. So if we have a Z-hop enabled, then the uh, nozzle is going to lay down a layer, it's going to retract the, um, the PLA, it's going to hop over to the next layer and then come down and then um, lay down a layer. If we don't have this enabled, what's going to happen is it will lay down a layer and then just go straight over to the next pillar and it might knock the pillar off, break it off and for a print that takes two to three days, uh, that would really suck if it happened towards the end. So this is a big one here, Z-hop when retracted, and then the Z-hop height won't be anything too big, just 0.2 millimeters. So we'll get rid of that. Cooling, big stuff here. We're just going to max out the cooling. Uh, so enable print cooling. 100% um, fan speed. We're with all of this thin stuff, all these thin pieces. We need everything to cool down, or else it's going to be all droopy and it's going to turn out like garbage. So, um, yeah, fa fan speed, maximum fan speed, 100%. Um, 
regular maximum fan speed threshold, 10 seconds. Um, next thing that's here is the regular fan speed at layer, uh, so layer two. The first two layers, or the first layer, we're going to just print down, no fans, or the fans not enabled. We really want the print to stick in all locations on that first layer. After that, we need to just crank the fan and um, have it going the entire print from there. And then minimum layer time, 10 seconds. Minimum speed, 10 millimeters per second. Again, cooling is really important here. Support, a lot of people might be surprised on this and might be scared to try doing all of these overhangs without support. Leave it unchecked, you don't need it. As long as everything's working properly and you're getting the cooling that, um, uh, or there, there's nothing messing with the cooling and also um, there's the, the printer's calibrated, so make sure the x-axis gantry is uh, perfectly level. As long as that's the case, then support won't be needed. Build plate adhesion, none. We don't need that either. Uh, dual extrusion, this isn't, yeah, it's not even letting me open it. I don't know why I'm trying to open it, but don't need that. Mesh fixes, um, so union overlapping volumes, have that checked. Merge meshes overlap, 0.15 millimeters. Uh, remove empty first layers, checked. Maximum resolution, quarter of a millimeter. Maximum deviation, 0 0.025 millimeters. Special modes. Printing sequence is all at once. Surface mode set to normal. Then experimental. I, I should have noted that I think I'm in a, a dated version of Cura. Um, yeah, haven't been too good at at updating, but some of these experimental modes might actually be somewhere else, but you can just search them in order to find them if you need to. Uh, slicing tolerance will be middle. Um, flow rate compensation, uh, max extrusion offset, zero. Flow rate compensator factor, 100%. Small hole max size zero, uh, small feature max length zero, small feature speed 50%, and then small feature initial layer speed 50%. And there you go. That is every setting that I had in order to print this. So we'll see how fast this goes off the bat. We might need to cut the camera and then once it's finished slicing, um, we might come back. I always get a little excited with how fast it slices off the bat, and then there's a point where it will stall. So yeah, we'll cut the camera, and then once the file is sliced, come back and take a look. All right, file is sliced here in the lower right-hand corner. We can see the estimated time is two days, 17 hours, 43 minutes. This can fluctuate a little bit. Kira generally is off by a little bit. This is, goes a little bit faster for me, but for some it may go slower. It depends on how fast the printer heats up. And um, yeah, so anyways, that's the estimated time. As I said, anywhere from two and a half to three days is what you could expect with these settings. 255 grams of filament, so just under a third of a spool. It's not a ton, to be honest, with how big this model actually is and um, the complexity of it. It's definitely worth that 255 grams. And if we go to our preview here for the um, G code, it takes a second. And it might be hard to see, but if we go down 677 layers tall, I'm focusing a lot on these areas right here, small, thin pillars. It, it freaks you out, and it freaked me out. I've made three of these, I, I should say, um, or no, four. 
I've done four with these settings, and every single one has turned out, aside from once when um, my filament was, there was a, a tangle, and yeah, that was frustrating, <laughs> but once you get to this point, this will be approximately um, around a day and a half in, you'll freak out when you see this, because when the, the nozzle is uh, putting this down, and maybe I have some footage uh, from when I was making the B-roll for this video, the last one I printed, you'll see this bend down a little bit, and it's kind of moving around. It looks like it's going to break. It looks like it's going to fail. But, again, it will be fine. It will make it. Just, once you get to this point, try to avoid watching the printer, or else... Um, yeah, it, you'll, you'll be inclined to either stop the print or it'll be freaking out the entire time. But yeah, as I said, I've done four of these and every single one has turned out pretty well. So thank you all for watching. I wish you the best of luck trying to print this model. I always call it the torture test for the printer when I try making it. Um, Again, I'll say printers work differently. So, as I said at the very start of the video, this is on the Creality Ender 3, but even if we all have Creality Ender 3s, every printer works just a little bit differently than the next. So, hopefully, this will give you a starting point. If you fail off the bat, don't get too discouraged. Just try playing around with some of the key settings we went over in this video and you can make it work. I look forward to hearing how everything turns out for everyone who ends up trying this and make sure to leave a comment on this video letting me know how it went. So, hope you all enjoyed and I will see you on my next video.